In the weather today, a blizzard strikes the Great Plains, and an increasing risk of severe weather unfolds in the southeast. And if you look at that image, dust in the southern plains. The world's hot spot, once again, Western Australia, Port Headland, with 118 degrees, and that was confirmed on their METAR observations. They are on the coast of the Indian Ocean, a little bit more civilization there. You can see a town off in the distance, maybe a fire or something. Let's take a look at the cold spot. And that's going to be Dalyunkir, Russia. We're becoming very familiar with that town. I'm not even sure if that's a town. It seems to be a little way station along that Yakutsk Magadan Road. Just not very much there. Well, today, what a mess. We've got a major winter storm. In fact, this is a blizzard extending from Nebraska down into northeastern New Mexico. We should go straight to the warnings and watches. And we don't often see this. About 90% of the U.S. population under some sort of watch, warning, or advisory today. It's been a long time since we've seen anything like this. I guess we should go ahead and start with the uh, Northeast. Winter weather advisories posted in the Adirondacks and in Vermont. Those areas expecting about 3 to 7 inches of snow. High wind warnings through western New York due to southeast winds gusting to 65 miles an hour. High wind watches posted from Burlington down towards Syracuse. Flood watch all the way from Portland down the east coast into Virginia. And of course, the winter storm watch up there in northern Maine. That's going to be for tomorrow night through Wednesday, looking for about eight inches of wet snow. It's not on the coast, but it does extend all the way down towards Augusta and Lewiston. All right, let's take a look at that forecast for the northeast before we move on. And yeah, this thing's going to be coming up from the central U.S. into the Corn Belt. 982 millibars for that center for midday tomorrow in a very large warm air advection belt. And uh, that's going to bring liquid precip all the way into Detroit, Cleveland, and Fort Wayne. And that will erode some of that snow, replace it with liquid all the way up towards Toronto. Very unusual. And finally, when we get the cold air building on the backside, this is going to be for Wednesday morning. We're going to get those snow showers back in there, but drier air. So the effects will be mostly early on as far as wintry weather before it starts changing over into mixed and liquid forms. In the southeastern U.S., a windy day. Wind advisories across pretty much this entire area north of Ocala. Winter weather advisory in the Blue Ridge Mountains for tonight due to freezing rain and high winds. And we've got an SPC enhanced risk in the western Gulf Coast area. We've got tornado watches from Houston all the way to Lafayette. That area of convection that you see right here that's going to shift eastward, not as much instability up north, but down along the coast there is sufficient shear and hodograph curvature to support some rotating storms. And then for tomorrow, enhanced SPC risk from Panama City up into eastern North Carolina and all the way down towards Jacksonville and Gainesville. And once again, we can see how this unfolds. Large warm sector in Louisiana. By midnight, things will be shifting eastward towards Gulfport and Mobile. Then by dawn, looks like a new area of convection forming along the front. That's going to track into Florida tomorrow. This is going to be about noon. Some of those will be starting to get severe. You can see the warm sector already lifting up into the Carolinas. So that will spread the severe threat northward all the way up to this warm front. Then by evening, we should see things start to move into the coastal areas. I do think that there is less instability up north. They are focusing on the North Carolina area down to Florida. And then things should clear out by evening. We certainly do not need a evening of tornado activity in Florida. In the south central U.S., yeah, things are very dynamic, very dynamic. Large comma head across Kansas down into the Texas panhandle. 
a dry slot filled with dust all the way from Midland to Abilene and on up towards Vernon and Lawton. And we've even got thunderstorms tangled up in this blizzard. That's a closer look at it. All of this right here is a ongoing blizzard. Right next to it, thunderstorms. Next to it, sunny skies and temperatures in the 50s. Pretty crazy weather. Let me show you that lightning. There's the GOES GLM product showing the lightning strikes. And quite a few of them from about Pratt down to about Slap Out, Oklahoma. And the station plots, they were a little bit hard to read, so I added those and replaced the satellite imagery with water vapor. And right in here you can see that snow, temperatures in the mid-20s, sustained winds 30 to 40 knots, and gusts certainly higher. And out there around Woodward, 50 degrees. These are conditions a little bit further north, and we did have some extreme wind out in this area. The Clayton weather sensor was knocked out as far as the uh, wind sensor, and Raton, New Mexico. Well, if you look at their observation earlier today, they had winds out of the north at 47 miles an hour, gusting to 90 miles an hour, so almost like a hurricane. And I think some of that was gap winds through that Interstate 25 pass. However, Dalhart was gusting to 63 miles an hour, so quite a bit of wind in that part of the plains. And there's a look at the satellite imagery. That blizzard warning is all the way south towards Raton and Tucumcari, extends north towards Trinidad and up towards northwestern Kansas. The southern edge of the blizzard warning goes all the way to Dumas, Beaver, and Dodge City. The northern plains getting hammered as well, and these risks will continue overnight. That's due to those very strong gradients, very strong winds, and a drying trend, which produces more of a dry snow that easily stays airborne. So that will keep the snow lofted for quite a while. Here, the blizzard warning goes all the way up towards Goodland, Hayes, to McCook, and up towards Hastings. And then it extends down into southwestern Kansas. And we do have winter storm warnings through tomorrow for Salina, to St. Joseph, Kirksville, Pierre, and up towards Waukegan. That's just on the outskirts of Chicago. Those winter storm warnings go as far north as North Platte, Ainsworth, Marshall, Mason City, La Crosse, and over towards Green Bay. So pretty much this entire area right there under that winter storm warning. How does that all progress? Well, once again, we refer to the surface prog. Surface low this evening right there in Oklahoma City. There's that wraparound blizzard we talked about. You can see that the actual snow production is starting to shut down, but still the winds are kicking up a lot of that loose snow on the ground. That'll happen through tomorrow morning. Things moving northeast. The liquid precip extending as far north as Chicago, around Toledo and Fort Wayne. And a large snow band up to the north. And that's pretty much about where we would expect it. There's a rule of thumb that says it's about 60 to 100 miles left of the track. And certainly that does seem to be borne out by the surface prog. And then as we go forward, you can see the wraparound and that comma head bringing snow down into Illinois through the evening. And then things starting to shut down as things move towards the east. Then kind of a mild period through midweek. So here's how the winds are looking. This evening, in the cold advection region, 40 knots in the panhandles, and you're going to see this warm advection region become prominent as the gradients pick up there. By tomorrow morning, highest winds in the cold sector across Oklahoma City and Wichita, but picking up in the warm sector around Atlanta and Knoxville. By tomorrow night, high winds along the North Carolina coast. You can see offshore quite high, up near 50 to 60 knots. And inland, quite a bit of wind in the eastern Carolinas and up into New York and Pennsylvania. And gradually the hazards move into the Maritimes. Some strong winds tailing on the backside out there in Ohio for early Wednesday, but gradually subsiding. Looking at the southwestern states, a lot of snow on the ground. This is all snow in the Mogollon Rim out towards Flagstaff, the Four Corners area, the Painted Desert, and, of course, the mountains of Utah. 
We have a hard freeze warning throughout much of the southwestern desert region, frost advisories, regular freeze warnings. Temperatures will be coming down to about 25 to 30, even around the cities. And in the northwest, Kingman expecting to get down into the upper teens. In California, freeze warnings all through that area into the San Joaquin Valley, the Bay Area under frost advisories as well. And we've got a winter storm watch for tomorrow night and Wednesday for the central and northern Sierra. Snow levels will be above 2,000 feet with higher elevations seeing 12 to 18 inches of snow. So here's what that whole mess looks like. Everything south of here is going to be freeze warnings. Everything to the north is going to be winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings. In fact, I just saw that this was upgraded to a winter storm warning for tomorrow night and Wednesday, and then this is a winter weather advisory. Then as we go north, we get into some really serious weather. Blizzard warnings throughout the entire Cascades from about Bend, Crater Lake, northward. They're looking for 12 to 36 inches of snow, winds up to 60 miles an hour, and that's going to be for tomorrow and Wednesday. And I'm not going to go through all these individually, but rest assured there is a winter storm on the way. Let's take a look at the surface progs. So this is where we're at right now. Then going into tonight, the precip starts up on the west coast, cold front moving in. And then by early tomorrow, there is the snow in the Cascades and in the Snake River Valley, all the way up towards northern Idaho. Cold air advection sets in during the day. The snow continues in the Cascades, and then system number two is heading inland. That's going to come in for tomorrow night and into Wednesday. Similar progression of the precipitation field. Then by midday Wednesday, spreading into the Great Basin area and the Salt Lake City region. And then kind of working down the Sierras. And as we head north, there it is. Large warm sector. You can see the dew points up into the mid-50s. Lots of latent heat available for this storm and strong cold air advection in the backside. All right, heading up north. A decaying occlusion in the Gulf of Alaska. Conditions mild in Alaska proper, looking at teens there, and a well-developed low around Anadir. In the Canadian interior, we are seeing that cold down to minus 38 at a couple stations, and we do have extreme cold warnings for parts of Canada, Cree Lake, looking for extreme wind chills down to minus 40, and extreme cold warnings in that same area up north for Colville Lake, Aklavik, Fort McPherson, and in Yukon for Old Crow. Those are all under extreme cold warnings, and a blizzard warning for the Dempster Highway through the mountains. That's going to be a bad time to be driving that road. I feel sorry for anybody that is on that road. Hopefully it's just the usual winter truckers. And then looking down in Canada itself, not much going on in the prairies, but in Quebec and Ontario, a winter storm watch Tuesday and Wednesday for a large chunk of that region from St. Sumery to Ottawa over to, actually that goes north of Montreal, over to Quebec City. Montreal itself is not in that winter storm watch. And the Maritimes are on alert for Wednesday as the big system makes its way up there. And yes, there is a lot of cold up north. The Arctic regions should be in that aqua shade this time of year, which is about minus 10 to minus 20. Instead, we have oranges, which represents extreme cold. Anybody remember that big Arctic outbreak in December of 1983? That was one of the largest outbreaks in the late 20th century. This is how the maps looked about a week before that event. And we see maybe a little bit more of a wider distribution of the orange all the way back into Quebec. And that's kind of important because some of that Quebec air did recirculate into the plains. This is about a week before the January of 85 outbreak which was also rather severe. It broke a lot of all-time records in the eastern U.S. And it does look like a greater concentration of that cold air up there around Baffin Island and southern Nunavut. And this is about a week before the February of 2021 event. 
Also, a lot of that orange showing up in western Canada. And that kind of built down into the north central U.S., sat there for a few days and then basically staged southward. So yes, you can compare that with what we have this evening. Most of it is locked up pretty far to the north, but as we go into the remainder of the week, it does start spreading southward. Look at that. By early Saturday, a very large extent of that extreme cold all the way into northern Montana. So that is significant. If we were able to bring that down, yeah, definitely a record-setting event. But it all comes down to whether the upper-level patterns cooperate, what the volume of the Arctic air is, not only in aerial extent, but also in the depth. And also, are things favorable for maintenance of Arctic air down to the south? If you don't have any snow in the ground, you're going to modify it very rapidly. So you have to really move it south to have a big impact. Anyway, it will come south, at least that's the consensus with all the models, that very strong northerly flow, bringing it down Sunday. That's going to be one of the critical days. And then on Monday, it should be settled in across the plains. Let's take a look at the damage. This is going to be the first round coming in for Thursday. Now, keep in mind, the models are not very accurate with all this. They're very finicky with these uh, Arctic outbreaks, and I'm going to expect that to be waffling back and forth at least for a few days. So this is just one possible scenario. So it looks like it's going to probably come south Saturday and Sunday, sub-zeros all the way to Des Moines and North Platte for Sunday, and then one good punch for Monday coming all the way down to the Gulf Coast. And then by Tuesday morning, that could be one of the coldest days. The zero line running about like that. The 20 degree line that appears to go all the way maybe towards Dallas. And I did see the European model did go much colder, maybe about 5 or 10 degrees colder than this. But it too is trying to settle on a solution. No more Arctic air up north from what I can tell, so probably a moderating trend after this event, but we shall see. All right, let's take a look at the upper air charts to see if things are favorable for a big Arctic outbreak. We do look for ridging on the west coast. That is very important. Also, we want to see a reduction in that zonal flow to help bring that cold air southward. So as we go into the weekend, that's one of the critical periods, we do see a reduction in that flow from the northwest, also a lack of ridging. So that is a negative factor. A little bit of ridging for Sunday, which could help give the air mass a boost south. However, it's not a classic Arctic outbreak, but certainly it's enough to bring some cold air southward. So we're gonna check back in on this and see how things look on Wednesday. And that will do it for this show. It was decided at the last minute to make the Monday show public. Typically, Monday is just for the supporters only. Very rarely, we'll open it up and make it public. And we went ahead and did that today, since there is a lot of significant weather. Remember, if you like this program, to consider a Patreon pledge. And I do want to thank Michael, our latest Patreon supporter. Hope everybody has a great Monday night, and we'll see you back here again on Wednesday for another show. Take care. Bye-bye.